To understand how our water system works, we gotta make sure we understand the water cycle. So first of all, water evaporates from groundwater sources, ocean, lakes, rivers, streams, and condenses up into the clouds, which eventually get cooler and get heavier until they form water droplets and precipitation. The precipitation can be water, it can be snow, and it falls on the ground. If it falls at high elevations, sometimes it'll turn into snowpack and then eventually turns into streams and rivers and goes back to the ocean. Some of the water also gets absorbed into the ground. Um, a lot of that will get used by plants and then the rest of it filters down through all the layers of soil to eventually collect into underwater lakes called aquifers. One of the frustrating things about water on Earth is that 97% of it is trapped in super salty oceans, which is almost unusable for us. 87% of that 3% of the fresh water that's left is ice. 12% of it's underground, which means that 1% of the 3% of fresh water on Earth, or 0.03% of all the water on Earth, is actually up on the surface available to us to be able to use easily and readily. So how do we use this water? Well, the largest proportion actually is electricity generation. 45% of all of our water use is in coal and nuclear plants to make electricity. Then 32% of it is used to grow all of our food with agriculture. 12% is what we use to drink and flush our toilets and things like that. Um, industry to run factories is 5%. Mining uses 2%. And there's other things like growing fish that use the remaining. Let's take a look at the water systems of the Southwest. Rain and snow fall in the mountains, on the plains, in the cities, and in the desert areas and collect into streams, which then collect into larger streams and eventually find their way into reservoirs held back by dams. Water is held back there in the lake and it flows through the dam and it comes out at the bottom. And it carries across and it flows down here into what we know as the Grand Canyon. But all of this used to be completely like that. So that lake wasn't back there. That lake was a big canyon, just like this before that dam was built. After leaving Lake Powell through the Glen Canyon Dam, the water meanders through the Grand Canyon here at the Horseshoe Bend and cuts a scar through the soft sandstone that you can see in the center of this. This is the Grand Canyon from up above. Water from the entire Northern region in Utah flows in there as well from places like Zion National Park and gets stuck in Lake Mead, which is another reservoir that catches water and holds it to ensure that we have a more consistent water supply in the desert Southwest. And it also flows through the Hoover Dam, which supplies electricity to over 1.3 million people in Arizona, California, and Nevada. The Colorado River then continues to the Davis Dam, eventually past Laughlin, and into Lake Havasu, where it flows underneath of the actual London Bridge that was dismantled piece by piece and put back together and gets stuck behind the Parker Dam. We're gonna come back to the Parker Dam in a minute, but once the water flows through this dam, it flows down the Colorado River along the border between Arizona and California, gets caught again behind one more dam, the Imperial Dam, before flowing into the Gulf of Mexico and becoming the Sea of Cortez. Now this is beautiful, but I wanna go back up river to the Parker Dam. And this is the site of the intake for the California River Aqueduct right here. This pumps 25% of the water that is used in Southern California, um, Los Angeles and San Diego through 242 miles of canals, tunnels, and buried conduit. Without this, Southern California would not be able to exist in the way that it does and hold the population that it has. On the other side of the Lake Havasu Reservoir is the intake for the Central Arizona Project Canal which pumps water over 336 miles through central Arizona and provides over 40% of the drinking water to Phoenix through a series of canals. And it also provides irrigation for most of the farm fields in the state of Arizona as well. When it gets to town, we obviously don't wanna drink it straight out of the river and the canals. So it has to go to a water treatment facility first. After flowing through the canals from all of our reservoirs, the water is pretty nasty by the time it gets to the intakes. And so it has to go at two special cleaning takes to be filtered and treated before it goes through the pipes off to our houses. These pipes travel from the water facility underneath the streets and then to the buildings where we use it. Here's the cap to the main water supply in the street that travels over to the water box for my house. So this is the meter where they come in and read your bill and how much they're gonna charge you for the month. And then the water flows 
through more pipes underground until it reaches the main entrance to your house. Then it flows through pipes within your house to the sink and toilet. Water sits in the pipes until you need to use them. So when I turn it on, water comes out of the faucet. Interestingly, the back of the toilet is actually full of fresh water. Like, don't worry, this is completely clean. And so when you flush the toilet, the water flows down, right? And then fresh water flows in here from the pipes out on the street to completely fill up your tank. Then when you need the water to come out and you flush this, the valve in the bottom opens up and releases all of the water. And that water rushes down and pushes everything in the toilet down into the sewers, which is the same pipe connects to the faucet that everything washes down the drain. All this wastewater from the house collects into sewer pipes and runs outside where there's usually clean out in case there's a clog. Then this pipe travels out to connect to the larger pipes within the street, usually denoted by manhole covers, which then collect into large sewers and head to wastewater treatment facilities. At these facilities, there's a series of pools that usually separate all the different types of waste and then send all of that solid waste to the dump and the clean water is released back into the ecosystem and eventually winds up in our oceans to evaporate and start the cycle again.